Hello everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We're going to show you how to take the Shield Android TV 16 gigabytes stock fully fresh install up to Android 6.0. This is the release that was just released so this is it. There is absolutely nothing else installed completely clean and just to show you uh, my heart's in the right place I'll run over to the about and as you can see it is version 6 all right so what's our first step <clears throat> our first step is we have to become a developer if you're not already a developer you'll need to do this so again we're gonna go back to about we're gonna go down to build and we're gonna tap a seven times and it's gonna say you're now a developer gonna back out We need to back out all the way unless they fix that because developer didn't show up until you backed all the way out now you see developer options excellent next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on USB debugging okay we need that on now here's what we're going to take a look at here over here on my other machine on my other on my PC I actually have uh, minimal ADB and fast boot already ready to go so a lot of people are curious what happens if um, you plug it into the computer um, and it doesn't get seen by ADB and I'm going to show you exactly why that might be so I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the PC right now via standard USB cable finding it's not upside down alright I've plugged it in now boom immediately because all my drivers were installed it automatically wants to make sure that I do want to allow this computer to access this machine. I'm going to go ahead and say always and OK. Now if I ran over to my ADB, DB devices, you see I actually do have a device show up. So I'm pretty much ready to roll now. All right, so the next thing I need to do is prepare. All right, we've got debugging turned on, right? Next thing we need to do is we need to have a micro SD card with Super SU Beta on it, which this does. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the unit. Now, this cannot be previously adopted. This is a fresh, quote, portable SD card. So I'm going to plug that guy in. and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use it as removable storage excellent alright so nice big fat guy I'm not gonna set it up as internal storage I'm gonna leave it as portable and uh, let's see I don't think I have a file manager installed on here yet um, so there's no way for you to actually see that Super SU Beta is on there but trust me it is alright the next step that we're going to do, now if you have anything that's adopted, you need to make sure that it's unplugged. My recommendation is to flash the Shield TV back anytime you're going from a rooted older version to a fresh version. It's just a way to stay out of trouble. However, um, there are other ways of doing it. So just so you guys can see how this works, um, I'm going to plug in this hard drive. I've got a, uh, a nice fat external hard drive. All right, this is a uh, 500 gigabyte. I'm going to plug this guy in and I'm going to turn it into adopted storage. It's plugged in. All right, USB drive connected. I wish to use this as internal storage. We're lucky this actually works. All right, I'm going to format it and it's going to format that drive. Now what's happening here is this drive is being formatted and encrypted. right? This drive cannot be unplugged, plugged into a PC, plugged into another shield, plugged into another Android device. It only works on this machine. Now the other piece of the equation is internal data. 
Now, we have two storage devices. Now, technically three if you count the micro SD card that I plugged in. We have internal memory, we have micro SD memory, and now we have externally an external hard drive that has been adopted as internal memory. The next thing it's going to ask you is do you want to move data to complete the setup? When it says the shield needs to move some data, it needs to move some data. All right? So you're going to have to move it. Now what this is doing is taking everything that used to be slash SD card slash and migrating it off of the unit. Now this is a brand new fresh clean unit so I didn't have anything installed. So there was very little to copy over. Right? But now what we have now is essentially a 500 gigabyte shield 16 bit SKU. But it's 500 gigabytes on the drive. Now <clears throat> this drive, now that this drive here is assuming the role as the SD card, the internal memory, right? I can't just push Super SU to it and flash off of it. It doesn't work. In fact, we can't even push it to the internal memory because that really doesn't exist anymore. Android has neatly moved it over to the external hard drive. So what you have to do is you have to take a micro SD card that is not adopted uses a portable SD card and put super su beta dot zip on it. Now we're ready to go ahead and begin the fun. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to kind of split this so you guys can kind of see both. I'll zoom in just a little bit. There you go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot the shield TV into the bootloader. ADB reboot bootloader Everything goes well, the Shield TV pops off, and it booms right into the bootloader. Alright, there's the bootloader. Now if you'll notice, the bootloader actually does tell you how to navigate the menus here. Tap on the power button to navigate menu options, hold down power button for two seconds and release for selecting options. Luckily for you, we don't need to touch that. Let's go back to our PC. Now. I have a whole bunch of twerps on here, so I need to make sure I get the right one. So I'll do this one-handed. The one you're going to be looking for is the Foster model. There may be one newer than this, but I know this one works. So I'm going to mark that. And I'm going to do a fast boot. Now, I don't want to keep twerp in there, so I'm going to do a fast boot boot. I'm going to paste in that long file name. Got a good look at that? All right, and hit it. Now over on this screen, it's going to automatically reboot. This first reboot can take a moment, so you've got to be patient. And this is going to reboot into twerp. All right, so now we need some form of mouse control. What I've got here is a wireless mouse with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. This is not Bluetooth. It's it's a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. I'm going to plug this into the Shield TV. All right, and now I've got a mouse. I'm not going to click anything. I'm going to accept the defaults. I'm going to go to install. Now, right now, it's going to internal storage, which does us no good. As you can see, there's nothing listed here. We're going to change to the micro SD card, which, ta-da, actually has Super SU Beta on it. We're going to go ahead and accept all defaults and swipe. Now, if you watch up here, this is a very different version of Super SU. It does what they call a systemless root. And it goes through a whole big rigmarole. Trying to get this down where you guys can kind of see it. And this takes a moment. Patching this, patching that, compressing this, compressing that. This is normally where I'd break into some sort of a song. All right, now it tells you right there, first reboot may take a few minutes. It says it right there. It can also loop, also loop a few times. Do not interrupt the process, right? Sorry, I was using the mouse. Right. Don't interrupt the process. Now, your next and only thing to do 
is hit reboot system. Pow. And then do not install. Look here carefully. This is the this is one of the big notes. If you blindly swipe. Oops, what happened? Looks like I went to sleep. I hope I click do not install. Because that's what I meant to do. I know I didn't swipe, so that's good. The most important thing to do is do not click or do not swipe because it will indeed um, mess up the system and try to install SuperSU the old way. We don't want that. All right, now this first boot, um, I usually, if I remember right, you'll see one um, boot uh, looks to be a boot loop. And then you'll get this. Now, this is all done without restoring the stock, right? We were we were on the latest version, right? So we didn't, I rolled back just to get a clean machine, but you shouldn't have to. All right, so there we are. We're back in the machine now. Now, the real question is, where's Super SU? I see it peaking. And, dun, 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 dun. oops, sorry, bad camera work. There it is. And would you like to follow me? No thanks. There you go. You are now rooted. So you'd probably like to see proof that it's rooted, huh? Um, let me see. How about uh, we go here? Let's see if mouse toggles in here. I don't remember if it's... Yeah, yeah, I accept. Mouse toggle. There we go. Requires root. Install. Continue. Blah, blah, blah. Open. All right. So there you are. There's the super root. Granted, baby. All right. So we're going to go ahead and have this. Uh, now I'm going to use an actual mouse just to navigate here. All right. So I want this to the service to go, blah, blah, blah. How do you want to switch between is bounce, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So we're good. So what that basically allows us to do is... Let me just get out of here back to the main thing. So what this allows us to do is tap twice on the play button. And now I actually have a simulated mouse. It doesn't work on this screen, unfortunately. Let me see here. Maybe it does. I don't know. Anyway, we saw the root worked, and that's the important part. So now you're ready to do whatever cool rooty stuff you want to do. That's pretty much it. Um, there'll be full textual documentation on NVIDIAShieldZone.com. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Catch us on YouTube, check me out on Twitter, and of course, follow me on Google+. This is Shane R. Monroe. Thanks for watching.